Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Last Call BBS, where today, obviously, we're doing some work down in the food court. Uh, so, I rearranged this thing, I cleared our old solution, and this is a representation of the most basic form of the logic that is going to be necessary to solve this puzzle. And when I say most basic, I mean it absolutely will not work if we try to run it this way. But let me just explain to you what I'm doing here. So, this is how the flavors have to work, right? We only have one input for Chaco, we only have one input for vanilla. So, for each flavor con combination here, for each, each flavor of ice cream that we have to actually produce, we're using a multi-mixer so that when the chocolate symbol comes through, we can fire chocolate. When the vanilla symbol comes through, we can fire vanilla. And when the twist symbol comes through, we can fire both of the other multi-mixers to fire the chocolate and vanilla, because this is the only way to have multiple inputs running to one post. However, obviously, like this, this is again just a real rough representation of the logic. As it is, these would fire immediately upon the cycle starting, which would not work, but um and I think I've got this wired up correctly. I believe this is the correct fence posting, because even though we need two, three, and four uh shots of ice cream the way this is rigged it's going to fire the ice cream on the same uh cycle that it gets pushed forward so it'll do one loop and then get a second one as it's pushed through to to actually exit so i think this is this is like roughly correct roughly the right shape however now we have to make this part real i wanted to do as much of the actual building of the machine on camera as possible but I also wanted to, you know, set the um, set the the basic logic in place here. Uh, also, this machine laid out like this. I like this because, like, for a moment here, we actually have good cable management. This is certainly better cable management than anything I've ever physically built in the real world. Um, and I appreciate that, like, it tries to loop the cables in like a sense of this is kind of a weird thing where like two of these cables are under that and the other one's over it. But whatever, like. The algorithm that's deciding how the cables move each other around is pretty good. It's pretty good. So, there's a couple of different ways we could approach actually doing this. I think what we want... I mean, first of all, obviously, we want these events to fire on the sort, right? Or on the, on the sense instruction of the sorter. So, we're going to need another multi-mixer for that. We're also going to need some way of, like... When this information comes out, we need to store that information and keep it somehow. I'm not sure what the right way to do that is. Here, let's just start building. So we're going to need a mixer for this. Uh, when the sense instruction happens, I do need to output a minus one. You decrement that. And then we are going to use conditional multi-mixers for this stuff. These are not even more expensive. Because what I'm going to do is just set up sentinel values. Yeah, so on sort, go ahead and fire the whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this will be. Let me let me get our counters up here. There's probably a there's probably a couple of different ways to do this, and this is the way that seems intuitive to me. It's a little hacky, I, I guess. So like, how do I want to do this? I want to. So we only have a positive out output on zero, an enable on zero. These function as AND gates, so I do need the zero output to be live. So how about this? Let me get one more multi-mixer. On start, we emit cone. We also set an initial value of one onto all of these. Okay. And then we decrement according to the flavor. 
Okay, so this is the chocolate one. If this is zero, this line is enabled and it, it makes the chocolate. The vanilla one is the middle one. If this is zero, this line is enabled so the sort will spit out vanilla. That could be a little cleaner in representation. Uh, and then if this one is enabled, we're just doing both of these, right? Yeah, so we have our ors, we have our ands. Is this going to work? Well, ooh, no, it's not, right? No, it's totally not because when, so let, let's, in action, right? When it's a twist cone, we're gonna get a count here that indicates size and that feeds back to the, uh, to the sorter. That stuff's all fine. But when, when the cone is twist, this is the only counter that's gonna be at zero. These are both gonna get incremented and not decremented. And so when this thing fires, it's going to send instructions to this multi-mixer, which is not enabled, and this multi-mixer, which is not enabled. So... How do I route around that problem? Okay, here's a... here's a hacky idea. What if we use, we just use the enablers to fire the signal over to, to another multi-mixer that doesn't have a, doesn't have a check. Cause we don't need a second layer of sentinel value checking, right? We've already done it up here. So when chocolate, all you do is fire to this multi-mixer, which fire, oh, these are backwards. I'm glad that I looked. And on twist, you fired them both. Is there a better way to rig this up? There's gotta be, right? I mean, conditionals are tricky. I think this is gonna work. Let's let's take a look at it in, in practice here. Okay, so on start, we are emitting a cone. Obviously this thing comes out automatically. We go ahead and do the stack up. Stack rejects. All right, so everything gets incremented on start and then only the chocolate one got decremented, which means sort is firing all three of these, but only one of them is turned on, causing it to spit out chocolate, decrement the counter, the size counter down to zero. But I believe, so yeah, we're here and we're reading zero on the counter, so we're doing a push through command, but we're do we're also doing a uh, another shot of ice cream at the same time. Okay, cool. Let's let it just play through. I'm pretty confident this is gonna work for the vanilla. It should be good for everything, right? Maybe even could speed this up. So this should totally work. It's kind of a silly way to do it, but. Hmm. Oh, no, 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 sorry, this is the large, yeah. That's totally what that's supposed to look like. It's this one. Yeah, okay. We're firing everything. It feels like a lot of wires <laughs> for that solution. It feels like there's gotta be a, a way to do this thing that is fewer total machines. Let's see where we land relative to everybody else. I think this is probably approximately the most efficient version of this machine, but I'm sure there are better machines to build. Okay, so most people get it done in uh, less, approximately half the time, and with considerably less cost than that. Oh well. <laughs> A type of ice, yeah, okay, we, we read this text already. Hungry Ghost, three stars, cold. Uh, the year 2000, 
with his sick Jordy LaForge gla- glasses, gives it one star, an illogical way to distribute the substance. You know, ice cream cones are kind of a silly... I've always been a, a bowl woman myself, but you know what it is. Like, something about this just triggers the nostalgia in people. Uh, and Rockabye Baby gives it five stars. I took a date here, but we had a fight, so I was standing there alone and angry and holding my ice cream. It was the perfect old-time human experience. Sadly, an experience I literally have had myself. All right, what's up next? Kazan. Oh, hey, also a handy mate entry, it turns out. One of the things people always talk about when they see old computer games is how quirky they are, how much personality they seem to have, how unrestrained they feel, despite all of the huge technical limitations the creators were dealing with. Maybe one reason it was like that was because there just wasn't anyone to stop you from putting whatever you wanted into the game. Whatever weird idea or strange obsession you had, you could do it, even it was even if it was based on a personal sense of humor that didn't always land. Zach Maddox being a case in point. This is a cute bit of meta commentary. How many entries are associated with this game? Okay, three more. I mean, there's a lot of puzzles yet to go, right? So, Kazan. These small edible sustenance pockets are perfect for sampling and sharing. By ingeniously reducing the size of one systemic food unit, Palmeni approaches a continuous volume while still maintaining its status as an assemblage of discrete objects. What a way to talk about food. Also, it's entirely possible this is not pronounced Kazan. That letter, you know, there are letters in languages that look like English letters, kind of, sort of, but aren't. I, I don't know. I don't know nothing about nothing. Uh, instructions. Put the things on the tray. Okay, it's just like, it's just sizes? Do we just have a, th- a thing emitter? We totally do just have a thing emitter. Um... So the question is like how do you um how do you run a 21 point counter, right? Uh we don't even actually need a stacker on this one. I mean the simple way to do this is something something like this, right? We're just running this this machine's almost entirely logic. So it's just the the stacker holds the thing. I guess we could potentially set up several stackers if we wanted to, but there's probably a good way to a good way to do some counting shenanigans here. So what? It's one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six. Of course. So what's a good way? trying to think what's the smallest number of counters you could execute that that count in because you would need to you need to have some nested counting right i suppose the way you could do it is to have some multi-mixers rigged up How do you total it? I'm just thinking about like, I'm thinking about just actually running the math, right? How many lines are on a sequencer? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Hmm. I mean, I'm like, there's no way to use a sequencer that would be better than using a counter for it, right? Like, the idea is you have a counter where you're doing the you're doing the sort thing, right? Where it's you've you've set a number here somehow on sense, you subtract the number by one, and then zero is you you spit it out. And the question is just how do you get the appropriate number into this counter? And I mean, I guess there's a multi-mixer involved because there's a multi-mixer involved even at this very early stage of the logic because sense is also emitting food. So 
So how do we get the how do we get the count in appropriately? It's like one one plus two. What we could do, and it's clumsy for sure, is So I can use a counter for each one of these to turn the um to turn the the thing coming in from the order machine into a logical value that we can then manipulate. Are these yes, they are single digit limited. Okay. That's fine. What we need is so actually I don't want to do this at all. Sorry. This is probably not the most efficient way to do this, but I'm just gonna to try to build it in a way that I can make sense of it visually. You may have noticed I'm a very visual thinker. Uh, when I when I program, when I do system architecture, it involves a lot of sketching in notebooks. Um, I think entirely in graph interfaces. So, right, like one is fire this. Three is fire this and this. Six is fire all three of these. So we could do this with a series of multi-mixers. And then what we need to do is communicate. Does this, hold on, the, um, the fancy counter. Does the fancy counter allow for larger? Yeah, the, the fancy counter allows for double digit number inputs. So it's like you end up feeding it all into here. Let me, let me just make this a fancy counter and we can always go back if we if we need to. I kind of hate running the wiring directly across the LCD. Whatever, it's fine. We all know what it is. Okay. How do I effectively we want to like drain the results of these counters into this counter, right? I could maybe what's the price difference? Okay, so one of these is cheaper than two of those. One of the big ones is cheaper than two of the smaller ones. I'm wondering if maybe actually the right play is to convert these into convert the six of these into two smaller counters. Because we very easily... And in fact, since 1, 3, and 6 are... Uh, since 4, 5, and 6 are easy enough to construct out of 1, 2, and 3, I wonder if there's a way to do it... Where each number is a certain number of shots on... Well, we can't activate one of these inputs any more than once per cycle though, right? Like we couldn't, f for say the 21, I couldn't fire three, seven times in a single cycle. So you have to be careful about how we're, how we're executing the addition. It could be, hmm, it could actually just be this one, right? Okay, let me try something here. What if it's like a bunch of sequencers? <laughs> Let's say this is one, two, and three. We're gonna need multi-mixers as well. Yeah, because the sequencers have to hook up to, okay. It's gonna be like a whole lot of multi-mixers. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> so I mean, let me try to make sense of this. I wonder if people who are good at this game, like I wonder, I wonder how people who are good at this game play it. 
Okay. It is, a, it is a lot clearer if they're not on the same level, though, huh? Let me move this part of the logic down just to keep the screens clear. There we go. That's better. All right. So we're going to need a couple of banks of these. All right. So when we get a one piece, just execute a plus one. When we get a three piece, let's see one, three, and then you have to make a four. So you don't necessarily need a two, do you? It can be composed entirely of like, I don't know, hold on, let's just, let's just run it like this. I can try to optimize the math later. All right, when you get a six, Wait, no, I'm sorry, I need to keep this clean. Because this is the one, this is the two, this is the three. Right? So when you get a... So then, yeah, this one, this one is for firing two. So, when you get a six, you want to fire the one, and the two, and the three. This one goes to here. Right, and in theory, if we've got this rigged up, it should already be functional for the first three orders. Let's see if that's correct. These products have collided, are they not? Oh, sorry, I'm wrong. I absolutely do need a stacker. Um, that's a challenge in itself, isn't it? I was not thinking about that, but yeah, I need a stacker. Okay. Well, that's not really a big deal. I don't think it changes anything. It just adds some time, right? It's like the idea is you right, Let me get the let me get the stacker out here. Can I, I can't, yeah, the, the stacker has a belt section included with it. So. Sorry, the sorter is after the stacker. What am I? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So the idea is the thing comes out. We inject it back out this way. So that's the right of this thing. As soon as you catch it, just go ahead and spit it out. Oh, right, except I have to... Uh, so... We can do an emit on the how many thing right away. I'm gonna end up adding a couple more layers of multi-mixing here. So when that happens, you definitely wanna fire one of these. But also, on start, we need to fire one of these. Right, shoot. That's a bad way to do that because of the way the timing works. Okay, hold on. So put one on there. Step that forward. On sense. Oh, right. On sense, we're firing the minus one. So, shoot. The number that we put into... I d I've done it again with the fence posting. This was the right solution for the ice cream because the ice cream needs one more shot than the number of passes. But it is wrong for this. So we actually...
So on One Piece, we don't do anything. Yeah, on One Piece, it's okay for this to just go straight through. Which means all of this... Lo hold on. All of the wire logic is goofy. Let me, let me fix this. Uh, so, on the three pieces, we want to fire the plus two line. On the six pieces... So these are the one, two, and three. So the six is actually a five. So we want to fire the two and the three. And I guess we still want to have these wires connected. Okay. So the counts there are right, at least. There are elements of this that are not correct yet, but... This machine has too many active inputs. It's trying to do a... Oh, right. Sense is the wrong... It's... It's as long as the number is positive, just keep slamming to the right. It's okay that it's just running all the time. But I do need to not output food. So the input that this is taking is just raw sense. The output food step has to be different though. It, it needs to not do this when the value is zero. So we're gonna throw, I'm just gonna solve all my problems with multi-mixers always. So right, we need on sense, if the number is zero, do an emit. Which is going to involve another multi mixer here. <laughs> there we go. Put through and. No, don't. Sorry. This is exactly backwards. Um... We wanna we want this line to be multi-mixed from positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is only enabled if the number is positive, because we need to keep spitting out food in that case. If we're zero, we're good. Yeah. Okay, score. So now in theory. I have to time this a little bit differently, obviously. Uh, I don't want to do it by just adding a ton of cycles. So what is the right way to do it? Well, you know. We can use the belts as a timing mechanism, potentially. So one, two, three... What I'm trying to avoid doing here is both adding a lot of cycles where the where the thing is just sitting on the stacker while it waits for a a new Pemeni to be issued, but I also want to avoid having to do any circuit logic. Wire logic is expensive and bad. And we already have to wait the the way I'm solving this. We already have to wait for this thing to go around because I'm using this as the routing logic. Damn it. I need one more belt. All right, so this lets us spit that out and it arrives just in time to be put on the on the tray. That's actually really nice. And that'll run the three and then it should run the six flawlessly as well. And then we just have to wire up the logic for 10, 15, and 21. Uh-oh. Did I do something wrong? Yes, I did. This thing connected to the six is just not, it's not actually firing. <clears throat> I just literally put that wire in the wrong place.
Okay, cool. So, how are we going to do 10, 15, and 21? <laughs> because we can't multi-fire these signals. And the answer is, we're going to fire them with sequencers. So, when we get a 10, this is the 10 sequencer. A 10 is actually a 9, which is 1, 2, 3, plus 3. Uh, so, A, B, and C while you're up here. The thing is, inputs are actually somewhat limited. Because this could very easily just be CCC, right? And I'm going to keep it... I'm going to keep it as... Yeah, that works just fine. I'm going I'm to try to keep it as A is the 1, B is the 2, C is the 3, even when we're only using one of them, just for the sake of being able to, you know, keep it readable. All right, so on a 15, which is actually a 14, we need... There's space in the 2 and the 3... So two, three, two, three gets us to 10. There we go. So I need a one, I need two ones, three twos, and two threes to get to 14, right? Two, eight, six. Yes, I think so. And then on a 21, we need a 21, which is actually a 20. We need three sixes and a two. And cycle-wise, I think this should all be fine. This is a <laughs> this is a nightmare tangle of cables, but I I don't think we should have any collisions with any of the machinery. Okay, let's run at normal speed here as we approach the uh, the next bit and, and watch the counter. Okay, yeah, so four, yeah, by four cycles, like, so that should totally work. Now there's a faster way to do this for sure that involve that doesn't involve sending the thing around for a loop with every delivery where you just hold it on the belt. Yeah. Um, if we were to just hold the thing on the belt and emit, 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 stack, 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 we could definitely bring the total time way, way down. We're gonna have a look and see if I can if I can put that together. This was this was just the way that like it made the most immediate intuitive sense to me. Uh, Secret is out gives it four stars. These are cute. They're like little foods. The point is to eat a few, not just one. The small size means easy distribution options for groups. Uh, Rockabye baby, who is a frequent visitor to the food court, gives it five stars. Dang, how cool it would be to go back in time and actually eat this. As, as opposed to now, when presumably you did actually eat this. And Bubba G gives it four stars, fun for the whole family, at least if you get the right number per person, and that is uh, pleased with themselves for whatever reason. Ah, next up we have a letter. Oh dear. Greetings, operator. Here are some regular 20th century experience events that operators should be aware of over the coming weeks. Uh, we have customer appreciation days, this bi-weekly event recreates the most vaunted 20th century event of all time, the sale. Everything is on sale during customer appreciation days, and we expect large crowds of eager consumers to buy our products, just as they did back then. I want to live in a future where you have to put the word buy in quotation marks. Uh... Treadmill Festival. Explore the endless delights of the hedonic treadmill with the monthly Treadmill Festival. In addition to a wide array of consumer goods, 
this event features a splendid array of live performances including career talks, inspirational messages, success coaches, and more. Whoever wrote this email loves quotation marks. The Capitalism Parade! Celebrate the triumph of capitalism <laughs> every afternoon as the Capitalism Parade marches through town. Reenactment song and dance routines rotate daily and include hits such as You Have to Advertise This Product, Owner vs. Worker, and Make That Number Go Up. Thanks, the management. Without much in the way of control over their lives, 20th century people often tied their identities to symbolic constructs known as brands. When the brands clashed, so did the people, perhaps no more famously so than in the brutal and deadly Cola Wars. All right, we're going to we're going to come back to that. Hold on. So what's the version of this um no no wait 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 wait. What I do not want to do is the thing I've just done. I want to start a new solution. Actually, no, I want to copy that solution. Yeah, delete solution two, copy this solution over. I don't want to disturb this monstrosity. I want to keep that for posterity. Okay, what if, what if we did not have a sorter at all? We just ran the logic off the stacker, which we should be able to do, right? So the idea is, So upon stack, we'd want the stacker to be up here. I guess we can't have that be there because we do need the first bit of food to hit just after the tray. And then it's like on stack do this thing and then on zero eject and it's the same machine in theory right here's a question how quickly do the sequencers start running oh right shoot so i need to So I need to, I need to increase the all of the fence posting by one then, which is annoying. <laughs> um, how do I want to do that? I guess what I want to do is starts running to a multi mixer. I just want to fire the one on start, and this shouldn't conflict because both of these cables are coming from other things. Yeah. So okay. Wait, why did that not eject? Because the zero, wait, as soon as that hits zero, so when you put the thing on, it's firing the minus one. It's not firing the minus one though. Shouldn't it be? So stack fires this cable, which should be firing the minus one, but it's simultaneously firing this cable. We're putting out the Pelmeni, which is adding one. Wait, why is it doing that? Oh, whenever it stacks, we just don't even. Oh no, hold on a second. I think I was getting confused there because there are cables and there, there are cables all on top of each other. Okay, so right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not firing the, the plus one. The fire of the plus one is coming from here, which is being run by the... Why is this adding one? I've forgotten how my, how my machine works already. Maybe I'm right. Maybe this is just...
right, that needs to add one at the start. This signal is coming from the stacker. Why is the stacker adding one? It's the only input to this thing, which is being enabled by the value being positive. We were using this to prevent the machine from, uh, to prevent the sorter from spitting the tray out early, right? This logic's not actually necessary anymore. Because we're not trying to fire an event except in the case of emptiness. We are only trying to fire an event in the case of emptiness. So this is only called by this, which is only called by this. So this is enabled as long as the number is positive, just keep holding on. But we don't need it as long as the number is positive thing. Okay, so if we just take this whole deal out, just run the stack command directly to the decrementer. Uh, I didn't reattach the wire that increments the value by uh, plus one on the start. That's a problem. Okay, that's good. So now we get a three. Oh, yeah, uh, sorry. I do need I do need that logic. I just have to wire it differently. Uh, failing turned out to be instructive. Who would have thought? So as long as the value is, there's a button that hides the wires. Here we go. As long as the value is positive, stacking should spit out a thing. A pelmeni. Wait. Oh yeah, that's the wrong place to put the wire. So this is the start command. Starting does need to do both of these things. But actually... Yeah, so whenever you fire the stack, as long as this value is still positive... We also need to we also need to do a decrement every time no matter what no matter what the value is so this has to run to the decrement thing this has to run to here for the sake of my own sanity we can reverse those okay so now every time we stack we will decrement the thing and we will emit a new food as long as the value is still positive on that cycle Mm. So now I don't want this to, to increment on start anymore, though. Because now we've, we've reinstituted that positive logic. I'm not going to change anything else. Let me... <sighs> but if we don't increment the value on start, then we're spitting the thing out of the stacker instantly. Hmm... The stacker being completely reliant on this value being zero is a little tricky. All right, well, this is part of why I didn't want to change that, because I thought there was a good chance that I was going to, um, I was going to just plug it back in. So I need the stacker... We need the stacker to be a little bit smarter than it is. I'm gonna have to give it a little bit more logic. So like right now, it needs to dump the thing and not spit out another Pameni. And the way we have this set up, the problem here is that the central value we're looking for is one, not, is not, is one, not zero. I need this to fire as long as that value is greater than one. So... And we can't just rewire all the numbers to be one lower because we're using zero as a sentinel value for something else. The zero is really important. 
And zero is not a sentinel value. It's a trick. You, you know what I mean? So how do I... How do I make the eject... How do I make this logic a little bit smarter? Is there a way I could physically rearrange it so that... Hmm. Because, like, right now, the problem that we're having is there is one extra food, right? So I can figure out that I could try to figure out the logic to make it not emit the extra food or alternatively, we could just throw one food away at the end of every, every cycle. That's probably not the right way to handle this. Maybe we do the emitting logic entirely within the stack step. And what would be good about that? Yeah, we just we just don't emit anything on start. Ah, but there's nothing to stack initially then. Yeah, that's a problem. We can't do the, the emit logic entirely within the stack step because you have to have emitted one food in order for a stack step to even occur. The trick is that I just need this thing not to spit the damn food out right away. So it stops running that. I guess another thing I could do is we could just make it so the, um, we could just dope this value. Okay. What if I don't add one to the value immediately? No, I, I do want to add one to the value immediately, but I also want to start a sequencer. Okay, this is a really goofy way to solve this problem, uh, but I love a goofy way to solve a problem. We're also going to start a sequencer that subtracts one. So this is on stack. This is firing a whole, a whole extra thing. I really just want... What I want is a multi-mixer whose job is just to control this input. So one, two, three. But it takes a, it takes a cycle for the sequencer to start up, right? No, this, I've, I've timed this correctly for the one phase. The problem is this needs to fire on the, on the cycle that the final, in order for this solution to work, this has to fire on the final cycle that the, um, it has to fire on the cycle that the final Palmeni is put on the tray in each case. So it's actually a huge pain in the ass. To, this is, this is not a good solution, basically. Uh, and in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and clear that again. We'll just, we'll, we'll just run you, wire you back there directly. Yeah, I really want to run all the logic right here, but the, the numerical problem is real. because it's always going to break early if I don't add one extra. But if I do add one extra, we're going to have a problem. 
where it's always going to try to, the way I have it wired up now, it's going to emit one more food. All right, you know what? I'm gonna worry about this later. Let's take a look at this before we end the episode. So what's going on down here in the, in the soda trenches? Instructions. Paint cup, add coat, coats as needed, dispense cola twice, cover with lid. So whether they order a Coke, a Diet Coke, a Pepsi, or a Diet Pepsi, we're, we're, we're putting in the same liquid. There's a, there's a single cola button. Grim, the grim dystopia of the far future, where you can order a Coke and get a Pepsi. So wait, are we spitting out a cup and a lid separately? I guess we would be, right? Because we have to stack. Yeah, weird. That's very strange. Okay, so sorry. The, the... So the, the spray patterns are, how does the sprayer work? Uses an adjustable mask to restrict which areas are painted. Okay, and it's a belt segment. Ah, darn it. How do I... How do I configure the mask? Oh, I see. Okay, there's a button here for it. I see. Okay. So we can paint. Red, white, red, white, white, red, red, white, blue, and blue. So we only actually need painters for the top and bottom rows. Although I suppose it is probably the case. Well, I guess I don't know why you would bother though. I was going to say, it's probably the case that you can paint that middle stripe and then paint white over it afterward, because white is a color on the thing, but why would you bother? None of the designs incentivize you to put anything in the middle. So I'm going to need at least four painters, right? How are we going to design the belt? I want to put, I, I want to inline as much of this process as possible, right? Because we're trying to save money on belts. And then... So I think I need... Well, can I, can I just do the, okay, I can replace that one. There we go. Okay, so it is like, why is that not? Is that just cosmetic or is that gonna cause an actual problem? Cause those belts are not connected. Ah, uh, yeah, you can't, um, you can't route like that. Okay. Oops. So this is going to, in fact, take one more of these. It dynamically re-lettered my stuff, which is going to drive me a little crazy unless we put it back in the right order. Okay, A, B, C, D. So... Right? Oh, sorry. Instructions. No, actually, we don't even need a blue for the top row. Which means I can go back to how I had this. With this thing being right there. Okay. Okay. 
Oh, well wait, is the base color of the cup unpainted? Or do I have to paint the cup white? Oh, I can't run the... The painters are just always on. Right, there's no ports on them. How, I, how did I think I was going to fire them? But it does look like I don't, I don't have to do the white. It looks like the default cup is that color. Okay, so then this needs to come out like... Actually, I guess up here, right? And then we have a belt doing this. But this needs to be... Yeah, this is wrong. Hold on. Except you can't route into that, right? I'm just thinking that um, I kind of want to put the tray. I want to put things together here. No, but the the sprayer, I the cola thing has to go before the stacker, or I have to use two stackers because I have to be able to put the cup on, or put the lid on the cup. But there has to be a beat here where it stays in place, right? Because I do have to, um... So maybe we use a sorter for that, I guess. Wait, will this work? Does the sorter let you input from the side? All right, let's do start dispense cup. Uh, stack eject. Let's just see what this does. Yeah, it doesn't accept like that. Okay, so... Do you need to route this a little bit differently? Alright, if I just move the whole assembly over... Then we can have them run like this, right? Right, if I do it like this, I have to do a pass through for that thing. So it has to send the tray through right away. Then it has to hold the cup until we do the thing. And then the lid's going to come through here as well, right? Is it going to give me grief if the lid gets painted? Yes. Okay, so we have to have more connection logic than this. Right, so this one needs to send the first thing it gets downward and then the next thing it gets out to the right. And we can, that's simple enough to, to rig up. Again, we can do a sentinel value thing, it'll be fine. This other part, we have to use actual, I guess like laying these out like this doesn't make sense. I have to use actual physical routing. The sprayers are always on. So it's like you either hit or miss the red thing, and then you either go to the red bottom or you go to the blue bottom. So it's actually, it's two decision points. How am I going to shape that? I should actually, like, I should make this correct. I don't know. I didn't need to delete the painters. We do, we do need to have three painters. What am I doing? Okay. So how do we form the routing here? I guess we are going to need at least one sorter. We're going to need some logic. And it's like... 
one one of these sends you here. This is what happens to the, to the lids in an ideal world. Right? One of these does that. And then the question is... So one of them is like one of them is the top part, one of them one of them is red top, one of them is nothing. And then one of them is blue bottom and one of them is nothing. But we need to have another another like unite and then sort step here. So it ends up looking like like this kind of Yeah. It's pretty ugly. <laughs> There's probably a better way to build this. Like, what if... What if it runs through here? Do we place the sorter? Yeah, this is better, right? The problem with this, of course, being that there has to be a straight line in here somewhere. There has to be a part where it goes straight so that it can get painted again. Well, I guess I can make... I can make this the paint, and then this this bit's all curvy, but it's fine. Yeah, this is this is actually fine. Disregard me. So this is our third painter. One of these two is the third painter. It doesn't matter which one. Okay. So this is... Red bottom. This is blue bottom. And then C is red top. Which we only apply to half of the drinks. And then there's just the, the naked one. Okay, so that's the physical routing logic. And then this just holds stuff in place until it is ready to be sodified. Can I actually... I'm probably allowed to paint the cup after it's gotten soda, right? Just throw another sorter down here. Okay, so on start, emit cup. Then this thing needs to fire sense. Uh, this thing needs to fire twice. Uh, the cheapest way to do that is going to be one of these, right? Zero is right. So on sense, decrement one. Start fires both emit cup and also set initial value of counter. Did I? Yep, that's just that's that's just not even rigged up to the soda command. Okay. So yeah, that makes that part way easier and means we can eliminate this sorter entirely. And then stuff just waits here. Uh, and so... We also want a counter for stacking. Because the stacker needs to fire two additional times on this before it lets go. There's a version of this where we just use the same counter, right? And that's a process I could make easier by making this counter into a bigger one. But it could be the case that 
like when this zeroes, we fire the plus one a couple more times. So like if I make it a bigger counter, because it's better to use a larger counter than it is to use two of these, right? So we go plus one, plus two, minus one. So that runs to there, that runs to there. We're zero triggering off of this. And then um, I need a multi. So there are a couple of situations where I have to call the minus one on this. Um, yeah, and you have. I also need a multi for the zero command here. Already, this looks completely insane. All right. That's maybe a better way to wire that. For clarity, you know. Um, because now it's really clear. So this is going to fire the eject on this thing, like, real early, but... Yeah, that's fine. It fires the eject before the tray reaches it, so it's cool. Oh, I didn't actually... Sorry. So the zero on this has to also fire... The plus three because I'm setting it to minus one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it needs to end up at positive two. Okay. And then when the stacker uses it, so this combination of things was 6k, which is the same price that using two different counters would have been. Does using two different counters necessitate an additional multi-mixer? I don't know. This might be saving money. It might not be. Um, okay. So then we have the actual routing logic for the cup, which is a thing that I don't know how we're going to do yet, but it definitely involves all these sorts and whatnot. So here we have the top half sort. Here we have the bottom half sort. What is the actual logic on these? It's... Okay, Coke means red line on the bottom, Pepsi means blue line on the bottom, and then the red line on the top is not diet. Okay. So what you do here is... All right, so Coke and Pepsi run to different mixers here. Wait, is this the right way to do this? So what I need to do is set values. It's like each one of these is... Diet is a single value. Right? Diet is the second. So actually, whatever whatever diet is doing, these are both doing it. But we don't necessarily need a Pepsi behavior because one of these two has to be the default output. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, this is the thing we could definitely use some counters for. Some of the big counters are very easy to use for this. We, we have a default behavior on one of the machines. So that one can just use a normal counter, right? The small counter. So it's like, when Coke increment by one, and then we have the zero behavior send it through the Pepsi thing. And on sense, we check for zero. Hmm, how do I want to do that? 
I guess there's two ways we could do it. One of them involves us having a having a different value for the other machine. Or the other the other type of pop, right? Cuz this way we this way we can create enable machines or in, enable multi mixers. So sense just this machine's sense um, these can just kind of be in the corner, right? Here, let's pull this over to there. I'm just going to try to make some room for logic. Okay. So if Coke, this value is one. If Pepsi, this value is zero. Upon sense... We don't really have like an else structure. So upon sense, we just run both of these. Yeah, I guess it's really ugly, but it looks like this. Sense fires both of these. One of them is active when it was Coke. The other one is active when it was Pepsi. And what they do is, if it was Coke and we have positive, we fire through. And if it was Pepsi, we fire left. That wire did not get out of the way. This, those have just bisected. I'm sure that's not going to cause any electrical problems at all. And then... The next thing is fairly similar. Actually, kind of easier. Well, let me just let me start by just wiring it up exactly the same way cuz it's simple to do. You know, for a certain value of simple. So, let me this is all logic from a different part of the puzzle. They place these in such a way as they, they make sense to me. So if, yeah, if diet one, otherwise zero. So on sense, keep pressing the wrong button there. On sense, output to these. So diet is one. Zero is, so zero is output to the right. Diet is go straight through. Is this a solution? No, not yet. Um, because the other thing is we still have to deal with the lid. Right? So... How do I... The lid's gonna come out of here and I need to just push it right and then push it right again. How do I make that happen? You know what I can do? This is going to make the machine more needlessly expensive and also add cycles, but it's also going to make the logic a little bit more um, easily comprehensible for me just to do the initial placement. So on sense, what I need to do here is, this is gonna look like a nightmare, <laughs> I apologize. Uh, on sense, what we need to do is there's a value somewhere that gets set. Yeah, I need an enable multi mixer and a normal multi mixer, I think. No, wait, I need a counter. <laughs> Not the intended uh, path. So on sort.
Because the idea is like on sense, I want it to go, I want it to just send stuff through unless a particular value has been set. But that's actually one machine too many. Oh, you know what? Hold on. We can use that. So let me set this up here. I'm just rearranging things. Okay. So on sense, what I want you to do is fire through here. This is enabled by the zero. So what I want to do is have the start multi mixer adds one to this counter. The zero is the enable here to allow things to go to the right. Is it easier to do this? Is it is it less space on the on the rack to do this with just the one sorter? I'm not actually sure that it is. But then I need to send the left signal otherwise. Ah, shoot. Never mind. This doesn't work. What would the logic be like to just do the right right? Right now. Right now, sorter C sends sends everything to the right. But anything that hits sorter C is getting doused with cola, which is a problem. So what I need is for the cola instruction to not always play. Right now, let's see. Right now we are naively playing the solo the 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 dispense cola instruction anytime we do a sense. But what we need to be doing is checking for What we need to be doing is checking for this value, right? So that needs to be that needs to be one of these allow things. Also oh, on zero, fire the eject. Or fire fire the output to the right the whole time. So all that needs to happen is I just need to replace this one controller with a sense controller that's rigged up to only fire on zero, right? But that's going to cause a problem, I believe. We'll see. So it's this one. The problem is, if all that stuff only happens on zero, we're not getting the second, um, the second squirt of soda anymore. So I have to, I do have to change some logic here a little bit, right? I'm, I'm. Well, now I've broken everything. Why is that not okay? So we have a sense. Oh, right, it's the, the eject command is what needs to be... You know, the cola thing needs to fire when, when this value is not zero. Sorry, that's, that's the problem. Uh, so this runs from here. Uh, 
Yeah, I needed I needed to do cola one more time. But not on the eject. Is that okay? Yeah. Because it shouldn't because of the fact that we've now enabled this only on positive. All right. And so we actually want to reduce the value of that counter by one because we're we're only taking this down to zero rather than down to a negative number now. Okay, so in theory, now the problem is I'm the problem is me using this double counter now. Now I've actually created a kind of a weird situation for myself. So right now, the thing that's setting the second value on this is doing so as soon as as soon as this counter hits zero. What it needs to do instead is fire on some later step of the thing. But the lid has to come out last, right? I've made this very, um, very slow and complicated. Because the lid has to come out in such a way that it gets, it gets where it's going after the cups do. So it actually needs a little bit of time. It could be a sequencer thing. Yeah, we can just we can just time it. So when this hits zero, instead of what all, okay, what all is happening right now? That gets sorted to the right. The stacker ejects. That's all fine. And then this part. So what I want to happen is the sequencer starts. And an output on the sequencer is rigged to the second plus two. But then also, this is when the lid ejects. And the sequencer needs to wait like... No, sorry, the, se the sequencer is what calls the lid ejection. Yeah, okay. So the sequencer waits for a little while to put out the lid. Let's just have a look at this. So like, all right, we just got called, we just called the sequencer thing, right? So it's gonna take the lid one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cycles to get to here. The cup needs to be in front of it. So the cup is in theory going to go like, the maximum length here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I want to wait like we could wait to here and it would be fine, right? Let's let's do like that. All right. Uh, I also need the a sorter to sort this thing to the right. Sometimes. To sort the second thing that it outputs to the right. Right now, what it's doing is just firing those. How do I how do I let it know that this is the third object? Well, I guess actually we can just run that off the sequencer logic, right? Yeah, it doesn't need to be like in a hurry. So A comes out or C is get lid. One, two, sort. So like here. 
And then that can be... This should work, right? Oh, why are you ejecting? Did I screw up the timing on this a little bit? <clears throat> oh, eject is getting played as long as this is zero, and I have now delayed the resetting of that value. Uh, well, we have room to set another counter up, so I could, I could just, I could just make this a second counter. I was trying to be clever with it to save a little bit of space because I knew I was going to need a lot of space for logic, but in the end, I think I've made this impossible to do this way due to unforeseen circumstances. So... Yeah. Alternatively, we could just mess with the timer a little bit more. What I need is for the output of this thing to be less reliant on No, I think we just put in another another counter to use to keep track of, of some of this stuff. So the eject command, instead of being played off of this being zero, is played off of this being zero. The start multi-mixer sets this to one, sets this to two. And now instead of, because this is the timer for the ejection thing. So when the stack commands runs, we need this to decrement by one. And then, now, we don't need this anymore. Okay. So the D the D command comes off of here entirely, but this still emits the lid and then spits it out in the right places, right? Let's see. Wait, did I did I not wire that correctly? Jack should only be playing the two right here. Huh, wait, okay. That gets set to two. Why is, where'd that get zeroed? Okay, right now the minus one is running. Oh, that minus one is not coming from the right thing. So this why am I why am I even oh there we go I just want the stacker running to here so this output can be running directly to this thing now because we're not we're not trying to use this counter for two different things so actually that saves us a piece of machinery. Right, and now eject is not getting called constantly, which is great news. This has too many active inputs. <sighs> Does it though? Why? Does it, and if so, why? Because these are enabled. Right. Um, so the A sorter's got, gotten used already. We can just turn these both off. Um, 
we can use an output from this machine to make those both non-functional so they stop calling the uh, the thing. And that timing should be more than generous. Yeah, you are definitely through there. So now we turn off the other sort behavior of the A sorter. That thing just gets bopped out. And eject gets called and the project product does not match the order, but it does like the machine runs. <laughs> the logic is wrong somewhere <laughs> subtly. Uh, so this is a Coke. I probably just reversed a value somewhere, right? This is a Coke. It should be coming out red, white, red. Yes, should be coming out red, white, red. It's not getting the top thing. So the B sorter logic is screwy. It went right instead of through, is that correct? We're gonna step it over to there. Okay, this part's good. Indeed, it went right instead of through. So why did that happen? That happened because this was enabled. So this was zero. Did I just put these wires in backwards? So right now, if it's diet, this thing is enabled and this causes it to push through. But yeah, that's, I just put the wires in backwards, right? Diet is supposed to not have the stripe at the top. Okay, well. <clears throat> okay, now I think it's gonna work. <laughs> that's kind of a silly error. This machine could absolutely be faster. Hmm. <laughs> Problem. Once the correct thing is accepted, aren't we stopping? What it, why is that why is that even happening? Right, this gets set to zero, and then it's just like zero for a really long time. It's zero for the entire end of the process. Yeah, so that's just lit up, and when the sequencer reaches its end, it outputs another lid. Okay, so this needs to be started not by, not by this being at zero, but by the event that, that sets this to zero. Well, that's going to be tricky to do, though, right? Um, hmm. This needs to happen exactly once per process. So when you get to zero, what else? What else happens? You also. You also make that thing eject to the right. C. Uh, so there's not really like, there's not a single time occurrence here. What we could do is we could run it off of this actually. When an object is detected on A, it starts because the lid doesn't, the, the second object gets detected on A while the sequence is still running. And then there's nothing on A. That's not a, that's not a thing that's just infinitely true. Right? Yeah. From this point in the process, we are no longer running that command. There's a lot of dead cycles in this machine. It absolutely can be tightened up. Well, that's the wrong thing. Why, why, why does that get painted blue? Uh, um, so the mistakes being made at the A sorter, it's kicking something left when it should be putting it straight. And that's because this value is zero and that's because Coke.
Wait. Okay, so this is a one. Meaning that at the A, it should be getting sent through. Okay. So that just got kicked because this is a zero. Well, right, when it's when it's Coke and when it's Diet Coke, it needs to increment the... That's why I had that, um, that multi-mixer there in the first place. Because both of the Cokes have to do that. So, actually, this is the Diet Coke multi-mixer. The thing about Diet Coke is, it is both Diet and Coke. I'm good at video games. <laughs> Well, that's less correct than ever. What did I do? Uh, yeah, I broke something. So this is this is the Coke multi mixer. This this needs to go to the plus one. Okay. Sorry about that. If you unplug the wires, you sometimes have to put them back where they were. This is not what this is supposed to look like. I feel very confident of that. <laughs> okay, so this one kicks down and then up. That's pretty compelling. All right, blue then red. Yeah, okay. Our histogram performance on this is going to be awful. Look at all the dead. There's so many space. There's so many spots in this thing where there's just like an extra cycle. But it is. It is at least emitting the things. That's technically a solution. You can't say it's not a solution. Interesting. That was the time most people achieved. But we can absolutely, we can trivially speed that machine up. And also that was the cost most people had. That's wild. I feel like that machine sucks. Uh, without, uh, so yeah, <clears throat> anyway. Kingfisher999, I'm so tempted to always reread the text. Kingfisher999 gives it four stars. People these days don't know how easy and carefree we have it. In ancient times, they were fighting actual wars over soft drinks. Hell, they're fighting actual wars over water, my friend. Uh, get me out of here. Two stars, they were the same. That's true. <laughs> and, and Hungry Ghost, an authentic person from the past, says Beppis. Okay, hold on. At the very least, um, this, right? Is there a reason that there has to be a delay on that part? What is, what is it? The C output is dispensing the lid. The A output is setting the that value downward and it starts when this senses does that break everything that might break everything it sure broke everything all right hold on so there's no way that the lid dispense has to be this late Right? The lid dispense can be right away. In fact, the lid dispense goes here. And then B is the send the lid out to the right command, which can be here, right? So it's lid goes out one, two, three. That might be one tiny bit too early. It is, okay. This needs to happen here. Okay, so that, that all works and that's just cycles off, except Ah, I, that's right. There was some spacing on the lid thing because in the absolute longest path, the drink takes a little bit longer to get there. 
Well, we can optimize this for that at least. Okay, there we go. I stripped two cycles off the function of that machine, and now we're faster than the big spike. If most people took this much money to get it done, that means they probably did use this many things on the rack, right? That's very funny to me, because this machine is wild. <laughs> All right, back to the food court. What's up next? Rosie's Donuts. These special cakes were the central part of an important employment ritual where sacred offerings were made to the god of successful careers. The round shape with the hole in the middle symbolized the grind, the virtuous, we need more quotation marks, and endless cycle of work. I mean, we're going to peek, right? Fuck. Okay, one, six, or a dozen plain chocolate or berry donuts. Donuts must be fried, then coated with ice cream. Ice cream? Icing. <clears throat> then coated with candy. Then stacked in the box. Potentially. Some of this stuff doesn't necessarily have to happen. So both the choco and the berry get the candy coating. The plane is good at this step. Just fry it and throw it in the box. So that's, I mean, routing-wise, that's interesting. I just, I want to pour the sprinkles directly into my face. All right. That's, that's, I'm good for today. That was enough. That was a lot. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. When you come back next time, tomorrow, I'm going to try to devote fewer minutes to this. We're probably going to keep playing food court for a minute here, because now it's, like, in my brain. But... Yeah, uh, maybe a little bit less so. I get carried away. You know, it is fun. I got carried away because it's actually very fun. So, thank you all so much for watching. That's it for us to, for today. Come back tomorrow for for the donuts because that's we, we got to make the donuts. I can't figure out how to get the phrase, it's time to make the donuts, into the outro smoothly. But we'll see you then. <laughs>